This is Morris. Morris, welcome. Thank you for coming. I'm Max. It is a pleasure. Pleasure what is mine. For you. Uh, I will start from the, from the recent advances. So we are following um, following your footsteps and trying to discover the code of the DNA. Yes. And uh, uh, there are many doing so at this time. Uh, uh, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, the protein code was discovered some time ago. So we, we know how the DNA codes for the for the amino acids of the proteins. Yes. But the, the vibrational code is, uh, is still not discovered at all. I mean, there is zero understanding of the vibrational code. There is a belief there is a vibrational code, but uh, no um, proof of that so far until last couple of days when we did our first analysis in that direction. There, without the vibrations, there would be no codes at all. Um, so the vibrational code is important. There are chemical codes, there are the electrical codes, and the vibrational codes go with all of them, actually. Um, vibrational codes are going to be the hardest of the ones to find because they are involved with all of the codes. Uh, they, they do have some, uh, there is vibration connected with all the codes. That is all there is to it. But um, these codes are, so study the codes, the protein codes that have been found. Um, there is, that's with the one with the least amount of vibration, actually. But it does still have vibration. So study that, because that has clues to the other codes. The codes are uh, not as you might think they are. They're, they skip over sections sometimes of, of areas that you would think that they would be involved in. The vibration moves in unusual ways so that it can include um, all different kinds of messaging. Now, you might say, uh, well, why can't it be uh, symmetrical? Or why can't it be in a, in a form that is easy to decipher? Well, is the body actually put together that way? No. So they have to actually work according to how the body works as well. There are some constants, and then there are those things that are in it, ad, uh, advertent and inadvertent. So you have all these different uh, codes mo moving at the same time, how are you to distinguish what is what, what is going where? That is going to be uh, a question. Because let, me try, let me try to describe what we did. Yes. So um, we, decide, we um, hypothesized that uh, periodic, periodic repeats would be the key for the vibration because they look like crystals they have periodicity in them they are like a typical one will look like 80 80 80 80 80 so it's very periodic so that invites the vibration and uh, obviously in the genome there is lots of them there is about 50 percent of the genome uh, filled with um, periodic repeats yes so we believe those are those are vibrating, but it, it's, it's hard to prove that they're vibrating because you know, they are there, and uh, the common opinion is that they're there because of mistakes, not because of the function. So uh, we decided to simplify them, and we, decide, and we decided to look at the ones which have decayed. So originally they were, were perfect, but then they decayed, and uh, some of them mutated, and we saw that Evolutionary, the structure will be kept, but the, the uh, initial letters will change. So 
uh, G looks like A and C looks like T, so they can uh, be replaced synonymously, but the, the, the purine pyrimidine code will remain. Basically, the structure of two rings and one ring will remain intact. So we started looking for those, and we found them. And uh, as a control, we use randomized sequences, and we show that statistically uh, there is many more, um, uh, we call them uh, recorded homologous sequences, but basically it's uh, uh, vibrational uh, imprints. Vibra there is many more, uh, many more vibrational imprints than, uh, than, than by chance. So it looks like we found them. Very good. So that is, yes, you found them. So there no, is an no. imprint. Yes. Go, go ahead. No, go ahead. So there is an imprint of purine structure. Uh, we also found an imprint of uh, hydrogen bond structure, basically, where uh, GCs have three bonds and um, ATs have two bonds. So if you just look at the, at the bonds, uh, that structure is also imprinted. The sequences vary, but the structure the structure, uh, there is lots of repetitive structures, which if you simplify, record and simplify the two uh, to hydrogen bond, to hydrogen bonds, then you can see the imprints of that structure on uh, other sequences. Yes. So we, we have shown that. And there is also one more imprint. So we, we look at the three recording patterns, but basically we show that the overall structure is conserved while the individual letters can be replaced. So that's the major finding, which I think we already have statistical proof of that in human genome. Yes. So Very the good. question is, what to do next? Mm, that is a good question. There's a there's hundred ways to go. It is up to you how to do it. But uh, you must find, you must prove that you, what you found is correct. And then show how this uh, changes the response. The, can you find that? Uh, the response is tough because these are highly frequent sequences, so you cannot mutate them because there is like thousands and millions of them. Correct. Uh, literally millions. And um, mutating them is not, not an option. So then you have to go to synthetic uh, parts of the genome and see how this works. And that's... Uh, uh, and funding is needed for that. It's doable, but it takes uh, uh, effort and money. Yes, but the thing uh, is, that, that would be something of, that would bring you some notoriety, I think. But, um, it, so it would be worth the effort, I think. But, it, and it would also show some, uh, uh, give them some idea of what the sequence is. Right, but there are alternatives, there are cheaper alternatives. One is to look at um, so-called annotations. That's what we are doing right now. So annotations are um, basically the map of the genome where each sequence is annotated with a function. And this is pretty well done. So many sequences have been annotated. So we can uh, look at annotations and see if... Uh, some of the annotations are enriched with the imprints of certain uh, codes, like purine code and strong code and so on, hydrogen code and so on. So that's what we are doing next. And so it's purely analytical computational work, which is cheaper. Yes. The codes are so uh, multifunctional and multidirectional. Uh -huh. what, is, what is being done at this time is actually miraculous because you are starting to find those multifunctional, multidirectional codes and seeing how they can be used in more than one way. Uh, not, not the codes, but the different sections, the AG, the CT, the, mm -hmm. and the different places have different uses with each uh, sequence right so, and how they uh, resonate one to another and you found that resonance 
So now you have to see where that resonance is going. Right. So that is your next move. Uh, when you find where the resonances are, see where they're resonating to. Right. Yeah, we don't know the physical uh, nature of the resonance yet. We just know the signature of it, but physical nature is still to be... We model, we have some models, but I think they are very imperfect. We, we, we should be able to find better models. Uh, what do you mean by imperfect? Um, that may, don't make a lot of sense. They make some sense, but it, I think if we think harder and we have more uh, uh, physics understanding, we possibly we can develop better a closer model to the reality. I think they are still uh, immature. I see. Let me, uh, I'm trying to wrap my head around what you're saying. Oh, I mean, the, uh, we look at the electrons and protons, how they move, and we can guess a little bit, but, but not a lot. We don't know much. We have to find better ideas how to interpret that. Um, the... Yes, because, all right, and you know about, there are so many parts of it that you know about, the clouds, the uh, right. protons, the neutrons. We just started, yeah, we just started yeah. paying attention to phosphate groups, and phosphates are interesting because they, um, they can uh, do, have, they, ha they have a uh, piezo effect, which is um, making electricity while moving, and I think that's uh, one of the keys, which we didn't decipher yet. And the clouds store information. And, um, right. and so, just like the clouds in your computer, right. it, they are storing information and they are re releasing it at uh -huh. the appropriate times. Figuring out the clouds will also give you a help, helpful understanding of how new, the neutrons and protons I mean, the protons and electrons are working right. um, in, this, in this situation because right. they're drawing out information from the, from the clouds and they're sending it in specific directions. But, of course, the pattern is uh, an unlikely pattern. So that is the part that is hardest to figure out. The yeah, neutrons. Is, neutrons we also think could be could be of, of significance and positive, but yes. but yes, um, they are, we, but, uh, we have, go ahead. Yes, they are. They absolutely are. You're correct. Mm -hmm. I, I was, but the protons and electrons are more active. Mm -hmm. So the neutrons are there to uh, definitely transfer information. They're not. There's no question. Mm -hmm. As you see in, in the case of synapse, the neurons are absolutely essential. So these neutrons are similar to the neurons in some ways. No, they're not. No. It's a bad analogy. No. I'm sorry. Well, they are. But I, I see what you're saying. But let me uh, see. What I'm saying is that they're, too, they're small. And um, it's hard to see how they can. Go ahead. How, hard to see how they play the role in the DNA sequence because they're too tiny. So um, there, there is a big bridge between a bigger structure and a tiny structure of ne neutrons and positrons. But obviously, there could be some information transfer, but then we need a transformer that would. Um, transform the, the information from the tiny structures to the bigger structure that we didn't discover yet. Yes, well, it th doesn't mean that they're not powerful if they're small. That's not, that's not relevant. So, electrons are of this, uh, you know, electrons are spread around in a bigger distance. They are yeah, comparable so, in the size of their cloud. The size of the cloud is ever bigger than a nucleotide, but um, uh, Nuclei of the of the of the of the atoms are. Uh, we don't understand how they could uh, resonate. It's the resonance between nuclei is not clear. Even quantum physicists cannot really tell much there. There is sure. some resonance we just don't understand much. 
Yeah, good. I got your mind going in that direction. That's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yes, keep that in mind when you're looking at these things. Right now, hold on one moment. There's some, I'm getting detached. Okay. There's some uh, problems here. All right. I'll be back. All right. 